Prepare to be amazed because the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is here to dazzle your senses. NASA's newest and most advanced space observatory is not just a scientific marvel, it's a visual masterpiece. Why, you ask? Because the JWST has captured some of the most breathtaking and spectacular images of our galaxy that humanity has ever seen. Curious to dive into these celestial wonders? Keep watching the video to immerse yourself in the stunning, ever-enchanting images of our universe. Want to stay updated with the latest news on the James Webb Space Telescope, NASA updates, and other exciting space discoveries? Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you're ready to witness a collection of awe-inspiring galaxy images like never before, you better not take your eyes off the screen. So, buckle up and let's embark on this cosmic journey together. This image from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared camera, NIRCAM, shows a protostar encased in a cloud of material that is fueling its expansion. The protostar is located within the Black Cloud L-1527. There are cavities above and below the star that were emptied out by the star's ejections, and their edges glow orange and blue in this infrared image. Stellar burps, or sporadic ejections, create bubble-like shapes in the region's upper center area. Molecular hydrogen that has been shocked by previous star ejections can likewise be seen as filaments by Webb's instruments. The top left and lower right cavities have what look like straight edges, whereas the upper right and lower left boundaries are bent. There is less dust between the blue area and the lower right than there is between the orange areas in the upper left. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's mid-infrared pillars of creation image is eerie. This region loses thousands of stars and becomes a sea of gas and dust. Webb's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, must detect dust since it's essential to star formation. These massive blue-gray pillars form many stars in these regions. Mass-rich knots of gas and dust collapse under their own gravitational attraction, heat up, and generate new stars. Stars are present but release little mid-infrared light. UV, visible, and near-infrared light are best for detecting them. MIRI shows two sources of stars, the thick, dusty pillars, and stars that have lately damaged their surroundings. Their dusty atmospheres make them crimson. Blue stars are older and have lost most of their gas and material. The dwarf galaxy WLM is nearby. It's three million light-years from Earth and lonely but close to the Milky Way. WLM may not have interacted with other systems, making it ideal for testing galaxy formation and evolution ideas. The Milky Way entangles many surrounding galaxies, making them difficult to examine. WLM's gas resembles early universe galaxies, which is interesting and crucial. Chemically, it's unenriched and low in heavy elements. Galactic winds have removed many of these components. WLM has formed stars recently throughout cosmic time and those stars have synthesized new elements. But when large stars burst, part of the material is evacuated from the galaxy. WLM-like galaxies can be ejected by supernovae. WLM is fascinating because it lets you investigate how stars develop and evolve in small galaxies, like those in the primordial cosmos. The Pillars of Creation were photographed by NASA's Hubble Telescope in 2014. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared vision shows more dust in this star-forming zone. The thick, dusty brown pillars are less opaque, revealing other red stars still emerging. Webb observes gas and dust pillars more clearly than Hubble. This Hubble image's background begins in yellows and moves to bright green and deeper blues. The dust around the pillars obscures numerous nearby stars. Webb's blue-black background illuminates hydrogen atoms and stars. Webb can also identify stars that have burst loose by penetrating dusty pillars. This beautiful picture is illuminated by near-infrared light. Both views show local events. Hubble shows denser dust layers and Webb more stars, but neither exposes the deeper universe. Webb's image emphasizes the interstellar medium, while Hubble's is obscured by dust, hiding the deep universe's uncountable galaxies. The pillars are in the 6,500 light-year-away Eagle Nebula. Around the star Wolf Rayet 140, 
Rings of cosmic dust that were produced by the interaction of binary stars can be seen, much like tree rings. The amazing regularity of the shell's spacing provides evidence that their formation occurs like clockwork during the eight-year orbit cycle of the stars, during which the two parts of the binary system come their closest approach to one another. The colors blue, green, and red in this image correspond to the data collected by Webb's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, at 7.7, 15, and 21 microns respectively. Researchers use data from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and Hubble Space Telescope to track light from the huge white elliptical galaxy on the left into the spiral galaxy on the right and discover interstellar dust in the spiral galaxy. This image of galaxy pair VV191 comprises Webb near-infrared and Hubble ultraviolet and visible light. Webb's near-infrared data shows the galaxy's longer, dusty spiral arms overlapping with the bright white elliptical galaxy on the left. Despite their proximity, the two foreground galaxies do not interact. Consider the background. Like many Webb pictures, VV191 displays several distant galaxies. Two patchy spirals to the top left of the elliptical galaxy have equal apparent diameters but distinct colors. Researchers require a spectrum to distinguish which is dusty and far away. Webb's near-infrared camera, NIRCAM, obtained this amazing image of Neptune's rings, which haven't been seen in over 30 years. Webb's new Neptune image shows the planet's chaotic, stormy atmosphere. The ice giant Neptune possesses more methane than the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. Webb's photograph shows that near-infrared methane is not blue. Except for high-altitude clouds, methane substantially absorbs red and infrared light, making the planet darker at near-infrared wavelengths. Webb's photograph shows dazzling streaks and patches from methane ice clouds, reflecting sunlight before methane gas absorbs it. Brighton, one of Neptune's moons, has Webb's eight diffraction spikes, an artifact of the telescope structure, to the upper left of the planet. Webb recorded six more of Neptune's 14 moons, a nearby star, and a few obscure galaxies. Webb's near-infrared camera, near CAM, illuminates the Tarantula Nebula star-forming region in this 340 light-year mosaic image, revealing tens of thousands of previously unseen newborn stars. The most active zone has pale blue massive young stars. Red stars are still embedded in the nebulous dust. Due to its remarkable near-infrared resolution, NIRCOM can detect these dust-enshrouded stars. An older star near the cluster of young stars and the nebulous cavity shows NIRCOM's eight diffraction spikes. This star's top central spike almost points to a cloud bubble. Young stars surrounded by dust are blowing this bubble to create their own cavity. Astronomers examined this location with two of Webb's spectrographs to identify the star and gas's chemical composition. Astronomers can determine the nebula's age and number of generations of star birth from its spectral data. The nebula is rich in complex hydrocarbons because cooler gas turns rusty farther from hot newborn stars. This dense gas will generate stars. Some gas and dust from giant stars' winds will accumulate and become new stars with gravity. A radically different picture of 30 Doradus is revealed when Webb concentrates on the region surrounding the main star cluster and uses the longer wavelengths of light collected by its mid-infrared instrument, Myri. The young blazing stars of the cluster lose some of their brightness in this light, and luminous gas and dust emerge. The dust clouds seen in purple and blue have surfaces that are illuminated by a lot of hydrocarbons. Because mid-infrared light may reveal more of what is going on deeper inside the clouds, a large portion of the nebula seems more ghostly and diffuse. A bright clump of still-embedded protostars can be seen at the very top border of the image, to the left of the center, within their dusty cocoons. Darkness can be seen in other places, such as the image's lower right corner. This denotes the parts of the nebula's dust that are the densest, and which even mid-infrared wavelengths cannot penetrate. These might be the locations of present or future star formation. Multiple observations are combined in the spiral galaxy NGC, 1300 picture to depict star population and gas. The frigid molecular gas clouds that are the starting point for stars to develop 
are highlighted in yellow by radio light collected by the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA. Red and magenta data from the Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer, MUSE instrument on the Very Large Telescope, VLT, show how young massive stars affect the gas around them. The James Webb Space Telescope shows dust lanes in gold and very young blazing stars in blue in images taken in the visible and ultraviolet spectrum. Researchers will be able to locate star formation in this galaxy's earliest phases by using high-resolution infrared photos from the Webb Space Telescope. How fascinated are you by watching these insane images taken by the JWST? Which picture mesmerized you the most? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed watching this content, be sure to click the like and subscribe button to make sure you stay up to date on the very latest news about the James Webb Space Telescope and NASA. See you soon in our next video.